This is every step I would take to grow my first 1,000 followers on Instagram. But if you've already got 1,000 followers, this process will work even better and you'll likely get to 10,000 and then eventually 50,000 if you can stay committed and follow the process. Now this is going to be a long video and I have timestamped things so that you can jump ahead and then skip back. And this system isn't a system that is gonna give you a overnight following that's massive. What it will do is if you're prepared to put in the work and the effort, you will see a substantial increase after three months, an even bigger increase after six months. And if you follow the process step by step for a full 12 months, I can pretty much guarantee your following will at least double. I mean, I've seen people follow the system and grow by 10 times the amount. I know the system works, but it's not an overnight success. It does require patience and energy, but it is a process that works. So if you don't know me, my name is Logan. I'm from New Zealand and I run a page called Kiwi Dad. My combined following is just over 100,000. I have about 80,000 followers on Instagram and the rest on TikTok. And I've been making content for just over two years now. But the majority of my growth has happened in the last six months. And I can hand on heart say that it's because of the system I'm gonna show you in this video. And a quick disclaimer, Everything I'm going to share in this video will be free. There are gonna be options where you could use a paid tool to speed it up, but otherwise everything I'm gonna to share today is free. I've decided, even though I've invested heaps of time into it, that I didn't have money when I started. And so I'm gonna give this all away for free and just leave the option open that if you find value in it, you can donate. I'm so sure this works. I'm almost hesitant to give it away, but I, I just think people deserve it, you know? Like you, you're working hard, I'm sure you are. I know what it's like to be a content creator. And when you find something like this that works, you know, you wanna share it. You want other people to be able to succeed as well. Before we do this process, you should clearly know your niche and target audience. And if you don't know your niche and target audience, I have another video which will pop up somewhere. Uh, and that will show you basically how to do it and will give you a free AI tool that does most of the work for you. Now for today's example, I'm going to use an account that is about dogs, specifically about pit bulls. The video is gonna be based around an account that already has posts up and things like that. This will still work for you if you don't have any posting history and you're about to start a brand new account. But if you do have some posts, it's gonna just help a little bit more. So this video is going to be split into four parts. The first part is about researching the account we have right now. What's working for that account, what's not working, and that'll give us sort of a metric on what our existing following likes. The second part is about finding the best performing accounts within this niche of dogs and pit bulls and then going through their accounts and finding the best performing posts. And I'm going to show you some free tools you can use to make this way easier. The third step is we're going to use my Notion content planning template. I'm not gonna lie, I spent so much time building this template. It works so well that I was going to sell it as a paid resource, but ultimately I've decided to yeah, give it away to you for free. And this content planner is going to make your life so much easier. It's This is one of the key parts that has made me grow so fast. You're gonna find so much value I promise you, it is so, so valuable. Then our fourth step is we're going to use some custom AI tools that I've built to take the ideas that we've planned in our content planner and create new ideas out of them that have captions, hooks, the whole idea made for you. And this is going to streamline your entire creative process so much. So like I said, this is a long video. I recommend you save it and come back to it. It is so filled with value. Like I really wish I had this video when I started. I imagine there's all sorts of courses. I've done courses before on Instagram and I can, yeah, again, hand on heart, I can say that this will give you more value than the majority of those courses if you follow the process. My only request to you is that if you do find value in this, send it to another content creator. Get the word out there and then hopefully we can build a community of people sharing ideas and sharing resources like 
I am to make us all the best creators we can be. For this example, we're going to look at an existing account called Happy Buddy Company. And we can see their stats just here. They've got 11.6 thousand followers. They've done 447 posts, so quite a lot of posts. We don't need to have done this many, uh, but this is again just to get us started. So we have the name of the account here, Happy Buddy Company. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that name and we're gonna go to this website called instrack.app. Now, this can be a paid tool, but their free version lets you look at two accounts. So we can get enough out of it by just doing it this way and deleting other accounts, which you'll see soon. So basically, yeah, you can use this tool without paying any money at all. So we're gonna click add accounts. And again, right now I've just set up a free account, so you can do this too. I'm gonna to copy the name in. There it is there, so I'm gonna add it to the dashboard. Cool. And now I can look at their account and their stats. From here I can see that they've got some good growth going on. They're gaining 235 followers per week at the moment. Their follower growth rate's way up. But really what we wanna do here is we wanna jump over to posts. Then up here, if you're on the free version, you can look up to the last 90 days. If you pay, you can look at all time. But the last 90 days works fine for us. We're gonna pick the last 90 days. After we've got that, so we've got last 90 days, we're in posts. We're going to go sort by and we're looking for the most engagement and then from here we're going to see all these different reels or carousel posts whatever was the most successful for them now you can't actually see the videos here but what we're going to do is we're just going to open these in new tabs i'm on apple so i just hold the command button and then click it uh, if you're on windows i'm pretty sure you just click control yeah hold control and then click it i'm pretty sure Anyway, we're just gonna open them up. We're gonna look at the top six. And then you can see up here, see how they're popping up? Boom. And so now we can very quickly look at the best performing posts without it being difficult. And we're gonna repeat this process on multiple accounts to build up a profile of what the best performing posts are in this niche. So this very first one, uh, just another bully breed account, has 10 times more likes than anything else. So the, the best performing post. Uh, and then we've got a negative hook as well, which is just another bully breed account, keep scrolling. And whenever you tell people to do something like keep scrolling, they're naturally gonna wanna do the opposite. So that's why you got people initially. And then the payoff is that you get to see, you know, a cute dog playing fetch. So I think our how to utilize for this one in particular is to double down on using negative hooks. And one of the AI tools I'll show you later can help you with that. But essentially we're gonna lean into don't buy a pit bull or pit bulls aren't safe around children. All these kind of negative stereotypes. We'll have that as the hook and then we'll follow that with like really cute clips showing, you know, how that negative hook isn't true at all. All right, our next one is Guess the Name, which is a trend I've seen in other places as well. Uh, it's quite popular in the baby niche too, so it's interesting that it's in this dog niche. Uh, for our elements, we've got obviously the engagement tactic of getting people to comment and put the name in, but we can see from the likes that that doesn't necessarily convert to likes or views. So it does work to get some engagement going, which isn't a bad thing, but it might not be as powerful. And we've got a hook there too of, I've seen this trend and people like to, you know, know what's happening. So they're interested in what the trend is. They're going to keep watching for a bit to find out what you're talking about. All right, our third best one, you think I'm cute. And the hook is essentially a kid's voice asking if the doggy's cute. I think you could improve on this almost instantly in that, the actual caption for Do You Think I'm Cute doesn't pop up until the second, almost third second. You want things immediately if it's your hook. So I think do this exact type of video again with a different like clip of the dog, but have it immediately have that hook. And then also like this particular reel that's going with it, the video that's going with it is on a bed and you'll get a way better engagement rate if it shows like a vibrant sunny day, especially if whoever's watching it is somewhere rainy right now, seeing a nice happy day, 
with a nice happy dog that's going to draw a viewer in all right then we've got don't uh get pit bulls because they're dangerous which is your fourth uh, which is the fourth best performing post and it uses a negative hook which is what i kind of captured on the top performing post that that would work quite well the audio on this one which i don't think you can hear because i copyright but it is a trending audio but it's like a really happy upbeat audio and then when you have that negative hook with such an upbeat audio it creates a conflict and sometimes conflict can be good but for me as an observer anyway it feels just like confusing and then the actual clips of the pit bulls that we see it looks like three long cuts and they're not matched to the audio you've used or anything like that we want maybe seven or eight shortcuts like really fast and we want to match them to the beat there's heaps of ways to match a clip to the beat CapCut has this good little tool within it which I can show you how to use but there's a app if you're on iPhone called Reels Reels for IG, Reels for Instagram their free version will basically cut up any trending audio and show you exactly where the cuts are so you could drop your clips of your pitbulls into that then match it to the audio and then when you go to publish if you're on the free one you just have to add the audio within Instagram but that's fine because you're going to be doing that anyway to get and on that trending audio and yeah that'll just be the fastest way i think for you to be able to leverage that in a really good way cool all right so now that we've got our top performing posts what we're going to do is go back into instrack and again using the free version we're just going to delete the account we were just looking at our account and we're going to put in another popular account within that niche so let's put in this one here which is don't know if I'm saying this right. She Bave Staffy. Hopefully I've got that right. Anyway, we're going to put it in and then immediately we're going to get their stats. And so we can have a look at how they're doing. And I like to take just a little screenshot of how they're performing right now so we can get an idea. You can see here that they're actually losing followers week on week. They do have a big following, but their all their metrics are going down. So more than likely, I would say this person was hitting the right trends and maybe they're losing it. When I see this, sometimes that means this isn't the best account to model off, but we can still see what was working for them in these last three months and see what we can take from that. So the top performing post in these last three months was when you beg for snack and instantly regret it. And so we've got a negative hook where the audience basically wants to see what the dog's face is going to do when it tries this food. And then we have audio narration over it, which isn't that much effort to do. You know, you can literally just do it in like voice notes on your phone and chuck it on, but it just adds a little more polish. I think for us, we can do this exact style of post. Like literally we can recreate this exact post, but then we could also experiment with multiple foods, seeing how, you know, I don't know the dog's name, but how let's say Staffy, how Staffy, you know, responds to trying a lemon or something else where there's a big reaction because the audience wants to see that payoff of what that looks like. Yeah, so I think we actually create a whole series that, you know, dog X tries X and then we can go from there. Oh, okay, this is really interesting. So the second most popular post and this will explain the massive amount of followers that are now dropping is because this person's doing a follower challenge so this post here, I'm just 4K followers away from 100K. I think more than likely, if we trolled through the whole page, we'll see several follower challenges like this. Follower challenges can work really well. Normally you don't hold the followers though. So say you set a goal like this one to get to 100K, likely you will get there if you're maybe, I don't know, 40 or 50k if it's a reasonable thing to get to that level you will probably get there and then once you hit that goal the followers will stop and they'll start to drop off and we know that they're under 100k followers now so that's likely what happened so while researching prior to making this video i did see that there is quite a few of these follower challenges in the sort of pet space so i saw one for cats as well and one for otters i didn't even know you could have otters as a pet but the one i saw for otters was like trying to convince my hubby we should adopt this otter he said yes if we hit fifty thousand followers something like that so i think if if we are getting another dog soon and we might not be but if we are we can easily make a follower challenge of 
if we hit 50,000 followers, my partner will let us keep this dog and do that basically every day, day one, day two, day three. And you want to have a little screenshot of the followers and it's gonna build up over those days. Do set a time limit. So set it to say 30 days, we're gonna do this challenge. And then that creates stakes for the audience who will then want to help you achieve that goal. It might not be that if you hit this amount that you know, you'll know you keep the dog, but try to make it some sort of payoff so that there is something out of it. Whatever you commit to for the challenge, if you want to be able to retain those followers, then you must have a payoff. So you must actually follow through with whatever you say you're going to do. If you don't follow through, then that audience is going to have you know negative opinions of you. And so it's gonna hurt your account in the long run. But I think if you can get creative and come up with a challenge in this kind of space, it'll likely work. So again, think of the limits of 30 days, have an amount you're trying to reach and have someone that's going to agree to something if you hit that amount. That tends to be how these challenges work and how they do well is that you're trying to convince someone else to do something because you're going to gain the followers. If it's just for you to keep the dog and you're the one deciding, the audience isn't going to buy into that narrative because they're like, well, you're probably going to keep the dog anyway. So you need to find a narrative you can frame. Okay, our third best post is my rescue dog calling out trash humans. And our hook is basically that we've got a cute dog and then a caption about abusive dog owners. And then there's this trending audio about when you realize what you missed out on. These types of posts where you're kind of calling out bad behavior of other people, they do tend to perform quite well. But unless your dogs are rescues, I wouldn't recommend going into the space. It's a sensitive one and it just isn't worth it. It's not worth, especially if it's not true. I mean, I'm big on integrity and that you want your audience to, you know, feel connected to you and know that you are authentic. So yeah, I wouldn't muck around in this one unless you're really confident that that is the truth for you, then sure, go for it. All right, next account. Man, these accounts are a bit hard to say. So Smuck is the Pitbull. And this account looks perfect. They've got a pretty big following, 278,000. Can see their weekly followers are going up by 3,500 every week. They've got a huge engagement rate, huge likes. And they're about pit bulls. This is the perfect model account for us. This is just what we've been looking for. This is also really good for us because now we know that this pit bull niche is alive and well. You know, sometimes you're not 100% sure how the niche is doing. Doing this kind of research helps us to see that this niche is really thriving and that essentially all of these followers for this account, Smuckers, can go to us as well. Or at least even if we get, you know, a quarter of them, I think we can get half of them. If we hit the same kind of points that that following is interested in, we're gonna be able to get that audience. So now we know there is an audience there and we're about to find out what videos they like to watch. So just that recipe alone is going to give us a massive surge in followers if we can be consistent with it and we can stick at it. Okay, so our top performing post in the last three months is Valentine's Day. And so our hook is a cute dog in a kissing booth outfit. I think that was like a popular Netflix movie. I'm pretty sure I remember seeing my wife watch it. Not 100% sure, but it's clearly resonated with the audience and it's got 360,000 likes. It was posted on Valentine's Day. So what we know here is that if we get a costume relevant to any specific holiday and we post our dog in that outfit, that costume, it's probably going to do really well. So I'd suggest we have a look at what's coming up. I know this account's following is mainly American. So let's look at upcoming holidays that could have costumes for them. And then if we have a little bit of money, buy some costumes, film your dog in the costumes, and you could do this, you know, like months before the actual holiday. You could, I don't know if there's like a place you can rent dog costumes, but you could literally just in one day, try out a bunch of costumes, film that, and then schedule those reels to go up on those different days, first thing in the morning, you know, like maybe even the night before the holiday. That way when people wake up on Valentine's Day, 
the first thing they see is this cute dog and this cute valentine's costume and this can work for thanksgiving christmas easter so many different holidays it can work for all right number two when you finally get the squeaker out so our hook is that we've got this dog that we know is about to pull out the squeaker toy and the payoff is that we're waiting to see them pull it out then we've kind of got a double stacked hook here where there's a trending audio playing over it at the same time that says all that work and what did it give me and so it's sort of like funny because we know that the dog is going to be disappointed and if you have a dog you know this feeling you've seen this before you know exactly how this plays out and how they are kind of like oh was that it for us to emulate this all we have to do is capture some footage of our dogs pulling out the squeaker toy exactly like this we can use the same trending audio essentially we can redo this this post and if we don't have a squeaker toy that's almost out we can kind of manufacture that and you know almost get the squeaker out then give it to our dog and then record it depends how authentic you want to be but yeah i mean you can just repeat that exact post in different settings so one in the kitchen one outside one at the beach it can be put in all sorts of scenarios and you could do this exact type of post once every month and it'll probably perform really well every single time okay our next best performing one a hungry swifty yeah this is really clever i hadn't heard the song but it's some sort of taylor swift parody song that they've changed to you know fit dogs and taylor swift right now is everywhere she's blowing up just having the word taylor swift in your reel is probably going to give you a little boost and then if it's something to do with taylor swift and it's getting engagement of course that's going to get pushed out to way more people so this was a really clever reel i'm actually surprised it's not their best performing one the audio is kind of annoying so maybe that's why but the other aspects that might get looked over is that each different clip to verse matches so whatever the song is talking about there's then a clip of the dog performing that action so that does take a little while they probably had to you know manufacture a couple of these scenarios to get that footage which if you're not a content creator you wouldn't realize that's what they did but i can almost guarantee that's what they did and then they've got a caption of each verse the full verse over each clip since we know about 80 percent of instagram users do everything on instagram on mute so that means that basically anyone watching this reel with audio or without they can see the text they can see the clip of the dog doing it it's still funny for us we can copy again this exact same audio the exact same structure of having the verses the only tricky bit is going to be having the footage to match the different verses which might take a bit of you know upfront time to create that again we can manufacture it or we can sort of just find clips that are close enough they don't have to be perfect they just have to be similar to what the lyrics are saying and it'll do well i would get on this one as soon as possible because taylor swift is very big right now so it's going to be beneficial but again yeah this you can repeat this exact same style and i can pretty much guarantee if you do it correctly with with this structure it's going to do really well and again if it doesn't post it again four weeks the exact same clip and yeah it's going to do well i can pretty much bet on it all right next up we've got the secret to happiness which the hook is i don't know the secret to happiness but and then you've got the dog's ears bouncing around this one works really well because it's just happy and it makes you feel good watching it it's using a nice trending audio with a happy tone this one's again super easy to copy we can do this exact same post as long as our dog's ears do that same thing but we can also adapt this so that it could be almost anything you know we, we could go into the negative hook and we could say they say pit bulls are dangerous but i've never been scared by those bouncing ears and have the bouncing ears or you know i don't know the secret to happiness but and then it can be stretches and then the dog stretching in the morning there's so many ways we can adapt this one the main thing we need to be aware of is that it's short it's got upbeat music and there's a payoff of something cute those are the elements i can see and i think if you just touch on those it's going to do well 
yeah, get a bit creative with this one. I think there's a lot there we can work with. All right, and then we've got performance review. So interesting idea here. I've seen something similar in the parenting niche of a baby, like reviewing dad and how he changes a nappy, a diaper. But yeah, basically this one is a hook of a performance review of their human or owner. And what works really well is it's cutting every few seconds while telling the human what they do wrong, like not complimenting them on their good stretching, etc. And I imagine they probably just had a bunch of little videos and they kind of worked around that of what footage they already had and then themed it that way. They're using lots of terms and things that dog owners are really familiar with. So you've got that kind of like connected shared community by doing it that way. And then they've used the AI voice to narrate. Now, I think we could do this exact same thing, but we could try a maybe a Scooby-Doo voice if that exists. That would work really well. Or you could get the David Attenborough voice, which I know is on Eleven Labs, and that's free if you have an account. I think you get like 2,500 words or something like that. Enough to do this real anyway. So you could get the AI Attenborough voice to narrate over it and be like, here we see a dog, oh, here we see a human failing to compliment their dog. And, you know, you can do all sorts, get ChatGBT to come up with a script for it and then Attenborough voice and just keep messing around with it until you get one that works well. Again, pretty solid idea that I think will perform. All right, so by now we should know the process pretty well. I've jotted down a few other videos here, so I'm just gonna boost through those really quick. But essentially the idea is you try and do this. Whenever you find an account in your niche that is doing something like this, this is the way to go. If they're successful, save their account and spend half a day once a month just building up a list of posts just like this that you know are performing well. And then you just start to build this big body, this library of trending ideas that you know are gonna do well. And the more you do this process, you start to just sort of know it. That's what this process is, is for, is to see what works, what doesn't work, and then just really kind of lean into what is working with your own kind of flavor, your own kind of brand on how you're going to do it. but. It is worth spending the time doing this and doing it right rather than just putting heaps of time into making lots of content and not knowing if it's going to do well. So even though this might feel like a bit of hard work and kind of like a bit of homework rather than just making content, it is so worth spending the time doing this because it will pay off. You will see a massive surge in you know, the benefits of your content and the people that it reaches. Cool, so now that we've done all this research on what posts are going to perform the best, we're gonna jump over to my Notion template. Now, this template is amazing, trust me, it has helped me so much, but there is like a little bit of education required in how to use it. So I'm going to set up this entire content planner full of the ideas we've gone through, and then I'll show you the process to actually use it. And the AI tools that I've made are all already put into this template. So yeah, let's just go for it step by step. So to begin with, I've just got our top niche accounts and I'll just put them down the bottom here so that periodically we can add to these and then jump back in and find what's working for them later on. Ideally, we're gonna want a list of like 20 accounts after you know months of doing this we're going to build it up and then we can kind of just raid all their best performing content as time goes on and when an account starts to drop off like i think the she bave staffy I'm, I'm sure i'm saying that wrong but anyway sheba sheba the staffy there we go that makes more sense sheba the staffy we might see that that account over the next few months drops down and might go down to like fifty thousand. and then as that happens they'll hop off the list and new people go on the list but yeah, for now, I'll just add in all the different ones we want that we've looked at so far. Cool. So to get started, what we're going to do is you'll see just under actions, you've got new Insta Reel, you've got Carousel, TikTok Reel, or YouTube Short, and then you've also got Email Newsletter. We're just going to be looking at Insta Reels and Carousels. So what we're going to do is just click once on new Insta Reel under action. And then as it pops up, you just need to give it a minute to generate the default template. So just while that's happening, I'm just going to give it a title, which is when you beg for the snack and instantly regret it. Now you can see here we've got platform, status, content pillar, publish date, due date, URL, 
archived and you can add other things again we're just going to be looking at instagram today we've also got these content pillars which you can change and the status part is quite important so for the status part we've got just here what we do is when we make a new thing it just goes straight to idea then once we've kind of scripted it out we can put it into planned then you move it to and you can change these this is my process filming and creating so that might be that one day i'll film a bunch of shots and I know exactly what I want to film that day because I've planned it here. And then the idea is that you build up enough of a library that for instance, for me, I have about 10 videos that are in the editing stage. I've got about five videos that are ready for publish. I have like 20 in that filming and creating stage and I've got like 100, maybe 200 in the planned stage. So eventually you build up this huge library where you've just got content kind of funneling through these different pillars really useful way to do it for now because we're planning this video we're just going to pick planned now for video example just here on your left under references that's where you're going to put what the idea is that you're trying to emulate or adapt so we're just going to paste the instagram real link of the video and again this is really useful because you're not going to remember what the idea was when you come back to this a month or two later so always try and link the video cool and then just for hook we can change this later on to be the actual hook for the video and then the kind of script we're going to go through for the video. It depends on what your niche is. For our dog niche, this isn't going to be as relevant. So this is more just like things we can do or ideas to get us started. Then what I'm going to do is just to the side here, as you scroll down under process, you'll see these different details that I've made. And so we're going to use caption GBT. And basically this has been made so that any caption you make is search engine optimized so if someone searches something to do with pit bulls hopefully you will pop up so let's just give that one a little test run now and then all we're going to do is say write a caption for this post and then i'm just going to straight copy over the little description of why it worked that i wrote earlier and then i can see because normally i would write this these little prompts as what the idea was in the video and then what i'm going to do because i've made it more like what this account should do the, the caption gpt has got a little confused so i just need to reword my prompt a bit i think so write the caption for a video about this so the real the caption is for is of a dog trying out a lemon cool and that's giving me a nice little process here so i'm just going to copy that in copy it over and perfect now i have a caption ready i've got the idea of the video now all i need to do is go film my dog actually trying the food like eating a lemon once I've got that video, I've got the concept, I've got the caption, boom. I have a full reel made that will probably perform really well. And again, if it doesn't, I can come back to it later. All right, let's make another one. All right, so let's do that follower challenge we were looking at earlier. I'll chuck that one in just here. Here's the video. Here were my notes from before. And for now, I'm not going to make a caption yet because I need to kind of decide I don't have enough information on if you know that challenge would work or not and then and then if I've got something in idea and I want to move it to planned I can open up it and pick it or otherwise I can just find these four little dots next to the thing and I can just drag it down to planned or I can drag it to filming and creating or editing and this seems to be the way I do it is I'll just drag things around so that after I've filmed a bunch of videos I drag them into editing kind of that's that's how it works for me but otherwise you can just click on the video and then under the status change it that way cool now the other thing is when you click on a video you can then set a publish date and there's a little posting calendar just down below and it'll instantly populate on there this is like so crazy useful because then you can plan out your content across a whole month if you spend some time building it up and then if you have a scheduling tool like Metricool, which lets you schedule posts, then you can kind of just copy them over into that. A quick note, I have found with scheduling tools that my reach doesn't seem to be as good. I, I've seen they argue it doesn't affect it and that even if it does, that your consistency in posting from scheduling outweighs that. So it's up to you. Experimenting occasionally with using scheduling tools, but... The times I've done it, I've had videos only get like a thousand views and you know, a low performing video for me would be like maybe 5,000 to 10,000. So to see a video only get 1,000 is quite noticeable, quite stark, which makes me think maybe these scheduling tools aren't that good. 
but using a posting calendar like this, at least I know what content I've got coming up and I don't have to rely on a scheduling tool. And again, you can have this for multiple platforms. So I could then make it TikTok as well, or I could have TikTok videos, YouTube videos, whatever. You do the work once, it goes on the calendar. You don't have to think about it. And if you're onto it, which sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not, I can have a full 28 days already planned. So that way if life gets busy and you know, I just, I don't have the time, it's all good. I've already planned it. I've already made the content. It's like sitting in my Google Drive. I just download, post it, the captions made. I don't even have to think about it. It's just done. And for like consistent content creation, and that's what you really wanna be doing is being consistent because that's how you grow. You need a system like this Otherwise you will, like life happens, man. The amount of times I've ended up working late, you know, you get takeout for dinner because you don't, don't have enough energy for dinner. The last thing I want to do is then film a video, edit a video, write a caption and post it. Like that's just not going to happen. But if I've spent time setting up a good workflow like this and I have 10 or 20 videos already ready, the captions ready, I jump on here, I mean, I've done it before where literally I'm ready for bed. I hop on here, I see it in my calendar. I airdrop the video that I've already made to myself. I copy and paste the caption, send that to myself. Boom, within like about two or three minutes, I've got a video up. The video does well. I've stayed consistent. It was super low effort because I spent this time here doing this. So if you're serious about growing your following, you have to have a workflow. This is the workflow that works for me. doesn't mean it's the workflow that will work for you, but I'm pretty sure having this is going to at least help you a lot and help you find that optimal workflow. Cool, and then I'm just gonna start planning out some more content. Same kind of thing. I'm just gonna title it, put in the video example, and then what I'm gonna do later with it. Cool, and then from there, now I have a bunch of different ideas already. What do we have here about? 15 ideas that are probably going to perform quite well if I do them right. They're in a rough state. I still have to make captions and things like that. But this is the kind of thing you can do. You can just spend, you know, a morning on your Saturday or Sunday or a late night Thursday, build this up. And then that's step one of your workflow done. And you don't have to waste time thinking, what should I make a video about? Because when you do this enough times, like I have, you have so, so many. Like I, yeah, I've got over a hundred different ones that for me, it's more like, which one should I pick? Not what idea should I do? I have too many ideas. So yeah, this is just a really nice way to build it up and make content creation a lot easier. Okay, so we've drafted out a bunch of different reels. Now what we're gonna do is look at some Instagram carousels. So a good rule of thumb, depending on what your niche is, is that basically any reel that has done well can likely be adapted into a carousel. And the reverse works as well. So if there's a carousel that's done well, you can probably turn it into a reel. And not a lot of people view it that way. And so there's a real opportunity there where if you go through, in this case, we're gonna go through some dog accounts that have made carousels that have done well. And we could then emulate that same carousel idea, but we can pull that idea and try and convert it into a reel and if it did well as a carousel, it's probably gonna do well as a reel. So one of the reels we made before was four signs your dog considers you as their mum or dad. And I've written out the different steps before that we saw in another video. So I've got that right here. And here's the video and it's sort of, you know, it's that classic thing where it's a lot of very generic things, you know, like the dog looks at you and licks you things that most dog owners dogs do already. So, you know, the dog owner is gonna feel like, yeah, my dog does love me. But I mean, this could be applied to so many things. So what we've got in our carousel template is this little carousel GBT plus. And basically this is designed so that if you give it the concept of a video and you drop it in, it will then split it into six to eight carousel slides for you that you can then copy over quite easily. All right, I'm just gonna switch screens here because copying over from one to another has been a bit frustrating. So hopefully we can still see this all good, but I've just got our, I've just copied it over to Carousel GPT now and we're just gonna see what it makes. Perfect, so you can see we get 
basically everything. We get the title slide and then we get different slides and what image should go with it. So I'm just gonna copy these over and populate it. And then we're gonna have a full carousel made up. Now I'll get into it a bit later, but provided you've got ChatGPT plus, you can then go into Dali and get the images it suggests to be made. And we'll actually do a little video on that as well on, on how to actually make something in Dali and then do it. And then likewise, I've got this little prompt here where you can then turn the carousel, this full thing into a caption that is search engine optimized. So that's just down the bottom there, but I'll copy it over. I copy over everything for the carousel and I make sure to say, do not create an image because it gets a bit confused. And there we go. I've got my caption. It hasn't quite hit right, I think. So I'm just gonna do some minor amendments. And I always suggest doing this with any AI tool. Never take the first response, or not always. Go back and forth and try and refine it. Oh, okay, so I see that the reason the response wasn't up to my normal standard is because I was trying to get Carousel GPT to write a caption. And I should have done it in Caption GPT. So I'll just do it over here now. Cool, that looks good. And while I'm doing this, and this is my creative process, I mean, yours could be anything, but I'm realizing that this signs that your dog shows that could be used for so many types of videos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get ChatGPT to come up with some other signs that dog owners could look for. Because I think this video idea is really strong and that we can make a lot of videos in this kind of theme. Yeah, perfect, I thought this would be good. Okay, so we've got signs your dog has imprinted on you, signs your dog sees you as an alpha. Yeah, and I can just copy these straight in as the caption because they're already pretty strong. And then I'll just go back into Carousel GPT and I'm just gonna copy in that caption. And cool, here we go again. So now I've got all my Carousel ideas here and I can just copy them over. And then again, this is gonna work in reverse so that I can then make a reel about this exact same thing, cutting up the footage. So from this one idea, I've now got maybe 10 Carousels I can make out of it, depending on how many signs I go for, and then I can make just as many reels. So from one idea and a bit of work, I now have 20 pieces of content once I do a bit of this work, and it's probably gonna, gonna work and gonna pay off. Now for our carousel images, we're just going to, while we're coming up with this other stuff, because I like to do a few things at once, we're going to copy the images that it suggested, and we're gonna put them into Dali. And we're just gonna add the word silhouette because Dali images look way better if there's a silhouette. So we're gonna ask Dali to make the image, but as a silhouette. While I'm doing that, I'm just gonna copy over this alpha one and make a carousel on that. And again, you'll probably wanna adapt some of this text and things like that, but it's a really good base to get you started. I mean, yeah, the more, the more time you put in, the better result you're gonna have. But having, you know, 10, 20 carousels planned for you like this that you can then just fine tune is a lot easier than trying to come up with them on your own. All right, how did Dali do? Yeah, I did all right. I kind of thought it would do better than that. I might try it again, maybe as a woman. Interesting that it goes to men straight away. But there we go, I've got my first image and the woman one, these don't look quite right. I'm gonna change it again. Cool, and let's come up with another idea and jump back in. What other signs could we do? Signs your dog wants more attention. Signs your dog feels safe and loved. Signs your dog is bored. Signs they're stressed or anxious. So you can see we have like just so much content here and I can guarantee dog owners are gonna be interested in it. Like off the bat, I've got a little little fox terrier that he's quite a little nervous Nelly. And so signs your dog is stressed or anxious. That's gonna be really interesting to me. I'm gonna watch that video. And then if we tinker with the caption so that it's suggestions to make them less anxious, that'll work really well. And then we've got our little Dali images here now too. So again, while different AI tools are generating things for me, I try and just jump between them. So I'll have some art being made, some carousels being made, some captions. You get really good at this if you do it enough and I do this all the time. So for me, yeah. It's just second nature. If you're doing this for your first time, expect it's gonna take you a little bit longer. But yeah, again, it's a workflow that works for me. Hopefully it works for you, but it's just super, super useful. And I think it will be really beneficial. And there we go. We've got a bunch of content sorted. We need to make some captions for some of the idea ones, but we have a, basically an entire month full of content ready to roll that we can just adapt from there. 
So hopefully you can see that improving the workflow is just so, so useful. You're going to be a better content creator for it. And by having this big backlog of ideas, you actually become more creative because there's no pressure. You know, that pressure of what video am I going to make? It's gone. That disappears. You don't have to worry about that. And so when there's no pressure, you actually get more creative and you start mixing ideas together and trying new things. One little word of caution is that if you do emulate the style of a bunch of people and you make videos for the algorithm, you can kind of feel a bit burnt out and not super into it. So I try and do a sort of one to one. So I'll make one video that I think is probably going to perform well. And I mean, it's still, it's not a science, right? So even when you're pretty sure a video will do well, it might not. Sometimes it just doesn't. And that's okay. But if you're just making content for the algorithm and it doesn't perform, you feel a bit stink. So yeah, try and do one to one where you go one for the algorithm, your hero content, and then one that's for you because you wanted to make the video. And that's, that's the best way for me. That's the best way I've found you know, a good thing where I, I really enjoy making content still. And then, yeah, you start, once you get kind of more confident, you stop making things just for the algorithm. And instead you just try and hit certain beats that you know are likely going to do well in the algorithm space, but are still creatively fulfilling to you. And again, this depends some people, you know, they're growing their page maybe for vanity, you know, they just want to have a really big following because they want free stuff or they want to get paid whatever it depends on the type of creator you are but i think the creators that last are the ones that enjoy the process they enjoy making stuff and so you really want to try and dial into that and i mean that's it for me even making these kinds of videos i'm really into this stuff you know i enjoy it this is fun for me and that's why i'm doing it you need to find a way to make making content fun and this is a really good way to do that but it all depends on you and your personal preference but yeah hopefully this helps and yeah just reach out if you need any help and that's the process it's quite in depth but it absolutely works my only request from you is that you send this video to someone else another content creator that could benefit from it Obviously, I would really appreciate if you subscribed as well, but ultimately what I want to do is create a community of creators like myself that are willing to give away what's working for them for free to others so that ultimately we can all succeed and do really well together. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found value. I'm so sure you will if you follow it. And if you get stuck or you need help using the content planner, just leave a comment below if you'd like a future video on something more specific within this, let me know. As always, I appreciate you. I know how hard you're working on your content. I'm working hard on mine. Let's grow together. Ka kite, and I'll see you next time.